everybody. Oh, hi. Hi there. We turned the camera sideways. We have a whole horizontal video thing going on here. I'm Danielle from Peas Loving Carrots. Oh my gosh, I can't find you. And we're back cooking the book. Today, the recipe we are making is my girl's favorite Moroccan stew chickpeas. I love this recipe. This is the photograph right here. Um, traditionally, the chickpeas go in the Moroccan fish, but I have some anti-fish lovers in my house. And in true Moroccan style, we like to please everybody. So I decided to separate the chickpeas, which is such a delicious part to like smash your bread into and get that sauce and goodness and separate them. And I really felt like my grandmother would be proud of that because um, she was really into, you know, food as a way of pleasing people. So I'm really happy about it. It has all the flavors of Moroccan fish without the fish. It's just stew chickpeas. It's really savory and really delicious. And it's really easy to make. And what's really great is this makes a big batch. And if you want to serve them like again the next Shabbos or you want to divide the recipe in half and save it for a weeknight dinner the next week, you can go ahead and freeze half of it and it defrost beautifully. And it actually takes only minutes to prepare. So let's get right into it and start cooking. This is what you need. First things first, you need three cups of very hot water and you need to stick your saffron in it. We are blooming the saffron. We are bringing all the flavor out of the saffron and into our kitchen. So this is what it looks like. I cover it with saran wrap and we let it sit. And then you're gonna wanna go ahead and prep all your other ingredients. This is the first thing you're gonna wanna do so that it can bloom. Next, we have chickpeas. I love these frozen chickpeas that we get in Israel because you don't have to soak them overnight because they're blanched first and they don't come in the aquafaba, so they don't have that smell. But there are options in the recipe for using canned chickpeas or dry chickpeas and how to soak them overnight and things like that. Then we have tomato sauce, we have jalapeno or um, long spicy green peppers, that we call them in Israel, cilantro stems, garlic, oil, and cilantro, and of course, salt and pepper. Um, okay, and here's my salt, pepper, paprika business, finding back here. Now we can get started. You are gonna wanna turn your fire on to medium high heat. We don't wanna burn anything that we're putting in here. We are going to get our olive oil into the pot. Drizzle, drizzle, drizzle. Then we're gonna add all of this. So first we have the jalapeno or the hot pepper, whatever you're using. Obviously, when it comes to the hot pepper, if you want yours to be less spicy, you can go ahead and scrape out the ribs and seeds, which is a lot of where that heat lives. Um, but we like it spicy here, so we're leaving it in. The garlic, now the stems. What's the deal with the stems, Danielle? Well, Moroccan cooking has a lot of hidden technique built right into it. And the stems have such a good flavor and aroma. And actually, it's slightly different than the aroma of the leaves. So, you know, do your own comparison. It's pretty cool. But the stems don't burn. If we put the leaves at the bottom of the pot to get all that flavor out, they'll burn. And we don't want burnt herbs in our dish. So we put the stems at the bottom. It's so brilliant. You know, Moroccan cooks were really thoughtful and it's really wonderful. And we're just gonna get those in there and we're gonna mix them up and we're gonna start toasting up our veggies and really, and our garlic and really letting those flavors combine and come together. It actually takes just a minute or two. It's not very, uh, you know, it actually takes like 10 minutes, that's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> but it goes quickly. You can walk away and go do other stuff meanwhile and come back and just stir it every once in a while. Okay, we're back everybody. Hi, how are you? Um, we got some nice color on our garlic and hot pepper. Let me grab a towel so I can show you that. I'm coming, here we go. Uh, the pot is hot, you see that color? That's exactly what we want. Now, the first thing we wanna add in is our paprika, salt and pepper. I'm using paprika in oil. Sometimes it's called Moroccan paprika. Um, I'm not, <coughs> the fumes are spicy, beware. Um, and I'm just gonna mix this around because we wanna give the paprika a chance to heat through and really let out its flavor. Uh, <coughs> it's a really good set. Oh my God, it's spicy. This batch was a spicy batch of peppers. Now, we're gonna go in with our frozen chickpeas. Don't worry if they're defrosted or not defrosted, doesn't matter. They're gonna melt pretty quick. They're gonna defrost pretty quickly. We're gonna go ahead and get this mixed up and get those spices incorporated around every single chickpea. You want every single chickpea to have flavor. Let's really get that in there. I mean, look at that. That already looks delicious. Can you see those colors? 
so good looking. Yum. My gosh. And it smells good right away because everything is fragrant. The garlic, the paprika, even the hot peppers give off that aroma. Um, and it's just really delicious. The cilantro stems. All done. Okay, we just want to get those, get this party started here. Oh my gosh. I love it. I love these colors so much. This is going to be a spicy batch. I could smell it and I like it. Now, we are going to go ahead with our tomato sauce. Um, I personally like to use either out of a can or out of a bottle because I don't like marinara sauce. I want to control what flavors go into my food and marinara sauce has spices and other vegetables in it and I can't control that. <laughs> so I don't want to use that in my kitchen. Um, I'm going to mix this up. Give the tomato a second to just cook and heat through. Take away some of that raw feeling before we add in our liquid. And now I'm gonna go ahead with this delicious mixture, which is really what takes it over the top. This is boiling hot. Don't touch hot glass with your hands. It smells delicious. The color is gorgeous. It is actually very, very hot going to switch to this. And all we're going to do is literally just pour that right in. Oh my gosh, look at that gorgeous red color. Do you see what's left in there? Don't lose that. Go ahead, fill it up with some water from the sink, swirl it around, and add that in. Just a few drops. It won't change the recipe, but we don't want to lose one bit of saffron strand because that stuff is, first of all, expensive, and second of all, delicious. Now, this is literally it. Last but not least, we have our cilantro leaves that are not gonna burn, but they are gonna wilt down and get yummy and delicious and add so much flavor to this. Mix this through. That's it, we're gonna bring this to a boil. We're gonna lower, once it's boiling, we're gonna lower the flame. We're gonna cover the pot. We're gonna let it simmer for like an hour, but you can let it simmer for three or four hours. Um, there's no right or wrong here. The longer it cooks, the better it gets, seriously. And you're good to go. Mark Girl's favorite Moroccan stewed chickpeas. All right, let's give you one last glimpse of this before it really cooks down so you can see what it looks like. Look at, the, look at that, look at those colors. It's just so delicious. Okay, that's it. We'll see you back here again when this is, uh, you know, all ready to go. We'll show you the final product. Bye guys. Okay, you could see here, I moved my pot to the back burner because it's slightly smaller and it's a lower flame. It came to a mixture. Now it's just boiling, simmering away. And we'll see you back here in an hour. Okay, this has been simmering for quite a while. Look at that, the chickpeas have softened. It is so, so yummy and so delicious. And the colors are beautiful. And like when you get like some of that sauce in your challah and you scoop up the chickpeas and you get a piece of that really soft hot pepper, it is just such a delicious combination. My favorite is if you serve it with garlic mayo and you get a little bit of homemade garlic mayo in the challah and all of this and some Moroccan salmon. Ah, oh, it's so delicious. Okay, I have to run now because as you can hear from the noise in the background, things are happening here. So I gotta go, but I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. I love cooking the book with you. Be sure to check out page 288, Girls Favorite Moroccan Stew Chickpeas for this recipe and this gorgeous photo with all my girls. Um, and we'll see you next time on Cook the Book. Bye everyone.